racquetball power to speed conversion. The difference between hitting average speed racquetball shots and high speed racquetball shots is knowing details. The racquetball power to speed conversion method demonstrates details of how to hit high speed forehand and backhand shots. Let's get started. One of the fastest ways to learn this powerful racquetball system is to see visually how the racquetball power to speed conversion works. Let's check it out. To help visualize power to speed conversion, we will use the racquetball court floor as a partial map of our racquetball swing and as a racquetball swing guide. Most racquetball players swing their racket in some form of a circle, which can be represented by this circle of rope on the racquetball court floor. A circle swing is the most basic way to hit a racquetball. However, a circle swing can limit how hard you hit a racquetball to well below your true top speed racquetball potential. Let's add a racquetball player so we can see the circle swing in greater detail. When you hit a racquetball shot using a circle swing, you have a few common things that happen. First, you estimate a contact point for your racquetball racket to contact the racquetball. Next, players usually align their body parallel to a sidewall before hitting a racquetball shot as represented by this white pointer. Then you position your backswing to a starting point. Next, you swing your racquetball racket to hit the racquetball. And finally, you swing your racquetball racket past the racquetball contact point and follow through to a finish point. During this racquetball circle swing process, we began with a sidewall body alignment, then shifted all of our power through the racquetball and then toward the front wall where we want our racquetball to go. Let's look at this circle swing again using a square shape that includes the white sidewall body alignment pointer as one of the sides of the square. On the racquetball backswing, your body is aligned parallel to the racquetball court sidewall and is also facing the side of the square. Your racquetball racket and swing arm are pointing to the back wall of the racquetball court and also to the back side of the square. Now you swing the racquetball racket about one quarter of the circle or 90 degrees to contact the racquetball. Your racquetball racket and swing arm are now pointing at the side wall and the side of the square. Now you swing the racquetball racket another one quarter of the circle or 90 degrees towards the front wall. Your racquetball racket and swing arm are now pointing at the front wall and the front side of the square. After you follow through, your racquetball racket may finish anywhere pointing from the front wall to the back wall as it starts to wrap around your body. In this example, the racquetball racket finished pointing at the back wall and also the back side of the square to complete a full circle. While the circle swing can generate an average racquetball speed, it limits you to lower power and speed even when you try to swing harder. Let's take a look at the circle swing from a side view to see where these power limitations come from. Of all your body mechanics, your fastest component is your wrist. Here your racquetball swing arm wrist is loaded for full power and is creating a 90 degree angle between your forearm and the racquetball racket. Your next fastest component is your racquetball swing arm which is pointing towards the back wall and creating a 90 degree angle to the racquetball contact point and also creating racquetball swing acceleration distance. The problem with this circle swing setup is when you swing the racquetball racket down to the racquetball contact point, your mind instinctively closes the wrist early so that your racquetball racket will produce a perpendicular and straight racquetball shot to the racquetball court front wall. 
Since the wrist closes before your racquetball racket hits the racquetball, your greatest power and speed can never occur. Your racquetball racket swing arm and wrist have arrived at the racquetball point of contact at almost the same time. Now, just your racquetball racket swing arm speed, which is much slower than your wrist speed, is being used to push the racquetball towards the front wall. It is for this reason that you can try to swing harder and only get a little more speed because you are using a slower arm swing speed. As far as power generation is concerned, in just the first one quarter of the circle swing, the swing is basically over. Next, you direct your full remaining force to the racquetball court front wall since you are in push mode. By having the racquetball front wall as a force destination point, you have also shortened your racquetball swing and reduced further your racquetball power and speed potential. Worse yet, your circle path racquetball racket rate of direction change is now decreasing and producing less force since your racquetball racket swing path is moving towards the racquetball court front wall. In the circle swing, we lose our fastest power and speed source prior to hitting the racquetball and then generate declining force as we swing through the racquetball and toward the racquetball court front wall. In the circle swing, your follow through has almost no influence since your power potential was limited prior to hitting the racquetball. Your shoulders are also used to generate power However, in this example, they were restricted from turning due to the feet being too close together and out of place. In the circle swing, the knees are too close together, which restricts shoulder and hip turn and causes the back to twist to its completion point too early. The heel of the rear foot only came off the floor a few inches, which further restricts upper body movement. All of these factors limit your racquetball power and speed potential. Here again is the model for the racquetball circle swing, which, as we have seen, can limit your racquetball power and speed. Let's now look at how a single model change can convert the racquetball circle swing to the racquetball power to speed conversion model and lead the way for racquetball players to pursue their racquetball power and speed potential. If you look at the white square portion of the racquetball circle swing model, you can see that each side is parallel to, or faces, a wall of the racquetball court. A major change found in the racquetball power to speed conversion model is to alter the white square orientation to a 45 degree offset. A second major change found in the racquetball power to speed conversion model is that the racquetball contact point is now located in a corner of the white square instead of in the center of a side of the white square as is used by the racquetball circle swing. The racquetball power to speed conversion model is designed to have the racquetball contact point in a corner of the white square since the swing is going to make a sharper change of direction creating far more power and speed forces and have a longer swing path. Let's add a racquetball player to see how this longer and more powerful swing path works to unlock your power and speed potential. In the racquetball power to speed conversion model, your racquetball racket is parallel to the back side of the square and is high above your head with the end of the handle pointing away from the racquetball point of contact. As your shoulders lead, you invert the racquetball racket to the hip position, keeping it parallel to the back side of the white square, and now with the end of the handle pointing towards the racquetball point of contact. You now rotate your body and racquetball swing arm until the racket has turned the corner and is now parallel to the front side of the white square. Notice that your racquetball swing arm wrist is just about even with the racquetball and is still in a full power 90 degree angle position. The last path element is to swing straight, along, and up 
the front side of the white square until your racquetball racket points towards the back side wall of the white square. The racquetball power to speed conversion model is used for both forehand and backhand racquetball swings to produce powerful and fast racquetball speeds. Let's get a stronger image of how our body and swing path work in the racquetball power to speed conversion model by looking at the swing again from a 45 degree angle view. From the 45 degree angle view of the racquetball power to speed conversion model, we can see more clearly body alignments and how the swing path is going to make a sharp turn from one direction to another, creating power and speed forces. Let's review the racquetball power to speed conversion model swing path again. Your racquetball racket is parallel to the back side of the square and is high above your head with the end of the handle pointing away from the racquetball point of contact. As your shoulders lead, you invert the racquetball racket to the hip position, keeping it parallel to the back side of the white square, and now with the end of the handle pointing towards the racquetball point of contact. You now rotate your body and racquetball swing arm until the racket has turned the corner and is now parallel to the front side of the white square. Notice that your racquetball swing arm wrist is just about even with the racquetball and is still in a full power 90 degree angle position. The last path element is to swing straight, along, and up the front side of the white square. Since your swing arm wrist is the head of the racquetball, you have now achieved a pull swing which can generate much greater racquetball power and speed forces. As you change direction and turn the corner from the back side of the white square to the front side of the white square, your racquetball racket creates your highest power, speed, and forces of the swing right through the racquetball as your swing arm wrist closes from a 90 degree angle to closed as shown here. At this point in the racquetball power to speed conversion model, your swing arm and racquetball racket are in a straight line and pointing towards the front side of the white square after hitting the racquetball. Your racquetball swing arm then swings along the front side of the white square with your racquetball racket and swing arm parallel to the front side of the white square. You continue to pull the racquetball racket along and up the front side of the white square until your racquetball racket points towards the back side wall of the white square. Let's now get a visual goal of how to swing using the racquetball power to speed conversion model by watching a highlighted racquetball swing arm wrist path in slow motion. Your racquetball swing arm begins high above your head with your wrist above the back side wall of the white square. As we track the racquetball swing arm wrist, you can see that it creates a vertical loop while staying above the back side wall of the white square. Next, our racquetball swing arm continues to the lowest point of the swing and also turns the corner to align the racquetball racket parallel to the front side wall of the white square. To turn the corner, you rotate your body and racquetball swing arm horizontally towards the front side wall of the white square. You now continue to pull the racquetball racket along and up the front side wall of the white square until your racquetball racket points towards the back side wall of the white square. As you can now see, this swing from low to high creates a vertical loop which is parallel to the front side wall of the white square. In summary, your racquetball power to speed conversion model is a vertical downswing loop a horizontal turning the corner, then a fast pull to the top using a vertical upswing loop. The racquetball power to speed conversion model allows you to produce your highest potential racquetball power and speed by aligning the swing so that the fastest component of the swing will happen through the racquetball point of contact. 
While the racquetball power to speed conversion model is offset by 45 degrees, the closure of the swing arm and wrist will give back the 45 degrees to equal a straight racquetball shot. This return of 45 degrees happens since the racquetball point of contact is located in the corner of our 90 degree angle halfway through the change of direction. We can now create power and accuracy by working with an easy to visualize 90 degree angle offset at a 45 degree angle. This is our power to speed conversion model. a maximum power racquetball swing, we need body positions that will support a powerful swing and be in balance. Let's take a look at these positions. An important position to make powerful racquetball shots is the angle at which you set your back. Here we have a rope which is taped to a sidewall of the racquetball court and set at a 60 degree angle using an ordinary protractor. If you do not have a rope or protractor available, you can also estimate this angle by visualizing the minute hand on a clock is pointing to 11 or 1. Now we can use this 60 degree angle back line to customize our power stance according to our own body build. The first step in customizing your power stance is to stand tall and perpendicular next to the 60 degree angle back line. Next, Bend your knees forward just a little until they cover about halfway to the front of your shoes. At the same time, lower your hips just a little as if you are starting to sit down. Your lower leg should be at about a 75 degree angle and your upper leg should be at about a 60 degree angle. Now step forward or backward until your hip is even with the back line. Next, keeping your head aligned with your back, bend your back forward until your ears are even with the back line. Now you can calculate your own 60 degree angle eye line by marking a spot on the wall located next to your eyes. Finally, you can calculate your 60 degree angle swing line by marking a spot on the back line near the top of your shoulders. Using the position you marked on the wall near your eyes, extend a second 60 degree angle line from the back line to the floor. This is your calculated eye line based on your body build. Using the position you marked on the back line above your shoulders, extend a third 60 degree angle line to the floor. This is your calculated swing line based on your body build. The final piece of the body position angle model is to add a racquetball at its designated point of contact, which is located on the eye line and below the knee. In both the forehand and backhand power swing, your lower leg, upper leg, and back are set at these angles during the ready position, which will be presented later. The racquetball contact position is located on the 60 degree angle eye line and below the knee on both the forehand and backhand power swing. This target racquetball position is designed to help you intercept the racquetball at a correct distance from your body and at a strategic power swing height above the floor. The body position angle model is easy to visualize since it is based on an equilateral triangle which has all equal sides and as a result all sides equal to 60 degrees. Before you perform a power racquetball swing, your goal is to move your body in this equilateral triangle position to a location on the racquetball court which will cause the racquetball to intersect its position in the body position angle model. During the power swing, your back should move downward from the 60 degree angle back line to become reset to a 45 degree angle back line prior to contacting the racquetball. In your forehand power swing, your arm still swings at a 60 degree angle even though your back is now lowered to a 45 degree angle. 
your eyes and the racquetball still line up on the 60 degree angle eye line at contact. In your backhand power swing, your arm swings at about a 75 degree angle, which points more toward the floor. Your eyes and the racquetball also line up on the 75 degree angle eye line. For the racquetball power swing, your goal is to contact the racquetball near the end of your racquetball racket on about the fourth string from the top. Also notice that the racquetball racket angles at about 30 degrees from the arm swing line. This is true for both forehand and backhand power racquetball shots. You can now experience the feel of the power stance body angles. in a powerful position is important for creating maximum power. Here's how you can customize your maximum power stance using a rope. There are two positions we want to know. First is the ready position when we're waiting for the ball. Second is the power position before we hit the ball. Let's take a look at how to measure these two positions. Starting with about a four foot piece of rope or string, tie a simple overhand knot about five inches from one of the ends. Using the back foot you use in your forehand swing position, which should be your glove hand side, stand on the five inch section of rope so that your first knot is just visible on the outside of your shoe. Pull the rope straight up until just above your knee. Find the spot on the rope that measures to just below your knee. Tie a second knot at that position. Pull the rope straight up until just above your waist. Bend slightly at the waist and locate the crease below your stomach. Find the spot on the rope that measures next to the crease. Finally, Tie a third knot at that position. You have now created your own customized ready position and power position stance indicator. Let's see how it works. Place your customized stance indicator on the floor in a straight line. Using the back foot you use in your forehand swing position, which should be your glove hand side, Point your foot towards your customized stance indicator so that the first knot is just even with the inside of your shoe. Place your front foot so that it points towards your customized stance indicator and that the second knot is just even with the inside of your shoe. This distance between your feet is your customized racquetball ready position. From the ready position, you can cover racquetball court position more quickly to position your body for your racquetball shot. Also, a single step from the ready position will allow the body to load for a full power racquetball shot in the power position stance. Now place the heel of your front foot until it is just beyond the third knot of your customized stance indicator. Notice that this position forms a triangle. Now you place your front shoe flat on the ground and pointing at a 45 degree angle towards your customized stance indicator. After your front foot is flat on the floor, you position your front knee until the front lower leg points up from the floor. As you position your front knee forward, your entire body will naturally shift forward and your back leg angles lower. The triangle shape is now altered to a power shape. This new power shape allows the knees to be further apart so that the body can rotate more freely and lead the swing. As we rotate the body, the hips move freely, allowing the upper body and shoulders to turn more and be less restricted. This distance between your feet is your customized racquetball power position. 
Now let's look at the footwork you should use to support your ready position and your power position. The importance of footwork can be seen by starting with both shoes just touching a straight line. For the ready position, you simply move your front foot along the line. From this position, you can change directions to get into position to hit the racquetball. Since the front foot points towards the line, it restricts hip and shoulder turn for your power position. To solve this, you turn your front foot to face 45 degrees towards the line. This will allow your hips and shoulders to turn more freely. There is one more footwork adjustment to make. If you just turn the front foot 45 degrees and move it forward, you will create a stance that will be less in balance. While the heels of both feet are still in line, the front foot toe is further back than the back foot toe and is no longer touching the line. This will cause you not to support a powerful and fast racquetball swing since your body will want to fall forward during the swing. To create support for a powerful and fast racquetball swing, place both shoes again just touching a straight line. Slide your front foot forward and along the side of your back foot until the front foot heel fills the space of your back foot, middle or narrow part of the shoe. This adjustment places your front foot a few inches ahead of your back foot. Now point the front foot 45 degrees towards the line and you will notice that the front foot toe is slightly ahead of the back foot toe. Now position the front foot forward to your power position and you can see that this offset creates an even stance. Your front foot heel remains in line with the narrow part of the back foot. This position will give you great support when you create powerful forces as you turn the corner in your racquetball swing. You should now be able to feel your front foot heel draw a straight line from the middle part of your back foot. This line should be parallel to the racquetball line of flight and can be used to position your body correctly during racquetball serves and rallies. Racquetball power to speed conversion forehand swing has three phases. The ready phase, the power phase, and the speed phase. Let's check it out. The ready position is used as you move into position to place the racquetball point of contact in line with the actual racquetball flight path. Your goal is to learn the ready position so you can accurately create that position in a movement. Here are 10 steps to get you in an accurate ready position for the forehand swing. Step 1. Place your back foot of your forehand swing so that the first knot of your customized stance indicator is just inside of your back foot. Make sure both shoes are on a line that runs perpendicular below the narrow part of your shoes. Step 2. Position your front foot so that your front foot heel fits in the narrow part of your back shoe. Step 3. Move your front foot heel along the line until the second knot of your customized stance indicator is just inside of your front foot. Step 4. Lower both knees until they cover half of the front of your shoes. Step 5. Lower your back slightly to 60 degrees. Step 6. Grip your racquetball racket so that it is parallel to your shoulder line and your customized stance indicator. Step 7. Rotate your shoulders and racket together until they are lined up parallel to the back side of the power to speed swing guide. This is a 45 degree angle load or wind up. Step 8. Extend your racquetball racket straight out from the shoulder and parallel to the back side of the power to speed swing guide. Step 9. Fold your swing arm up at the elbow until your upper arm points towards the back side 
of the power to speed swing guide and is aligned with your back angle. In this step, you should also position your racquetball racket to form a 90 degree angle to your upper arm and also have it point towards the racquetball court front wall. Step 10. Raise your free arm until it points to the racquetball court back wall, then position your eyes to watch for the incoming racquetball. The first step of the power phase is to be in the ready position, ready to intercept the racquetball. After you move to the court position to intercept the racquetball, you are ready to start the power phase of your racquetball swing. The power phase of the power to speed conversion racquetball swing is made up of three main positions. The three main power positions are load, flip, turn. The power positions are easy to create since they are based on the power to speed swing guide. Let's look at the details of how to accurately create these positions. While the ready position looks capable of producing a powerful racquetball shot, the load position can help you achieve your most powerful and fastest racquetball shot. Getting into the forehand load position from the forehand ready position will require only three steps. Step 1. Reaching with the heel of your forehand front shoe, move your front shoe so that the heel is just beyond the third knot of your customized stance indicator. Your front shoe points at a 45 degree angle and is pointing directly at the front side of the power to speed swing guide. Your front heel is still drawn a straight line from the narrow part of the back foot. Your front lower leg is positioned straight up from the racquetball floor and your back leg is straight. Step 2. As your front leg reaches forward, your free arm moves forward and down and is ready to help pull your shoulders. Step 3. As the above two steps are happening, you raise the elbow of your forehand swing arm to about a 60 degree angle by your head while the forearm remains almost level and pointing towards the back side of the power to speed swing guide. Your shoulders are now parallel to the back side of the power to speed swing guide. Your racquetball racket still points forward and parallel to the back side of the power to speed swing guide. Your racquetball racket is also up high and level near your head. You are now in a powerful forehand load position. Your goal is to learn this position so that you can achieve it in a single movement. The next step of the forehand power phase is to flip the position of your racquetball swing arm and racket as a one-piece unit. The one-piece unit flips from a high position near your head to a low position near your hip. If we take the position back to the top by reversing the video, you can see very little position change in the one-piece unit between the top and the bottom. Let's break down the forehand one-piece unit flip into parts. The forehand flip begins with the forehand swing arm shoulder pulling the one-piece unit. The forehand swing arm shoulder pulls from the load position almost 90 degrees until the shoulders now point to the back side of the power to speed swing guide. It is at this point in the swing where the shoulders, hips, and one piece unit all meet up which can help your swing timing. As the shoulders lead to pull the one piece unit, watch as the back leg shoe comes up on the toe to allow the leg to rotate which in turn allows the hips and shoulders to also rotate more freely. This time watch the forehand swing arm elbow move from the load position then down close to the hip as it pulls the rest of the one piece unit. Also watch the racquetball racket as it points forward and parallel to the back side of the power to speed swing guide then rotates vertically until it points backward and parallel to the back side of the power to speed swing guide. 
If you watch the 45 degree offset camera view, your front shoe points towards the front side of the power to speed swing guide and your upper body and shoulders move from the load position to being parallel to the front side of the power to speed swing guide. When your front shoe is set at a 45 degree angle, it can be used during an actual racquetball game to create the power to speed positions without having a power to speed swing guide to refer to. You should try practicing a few times the one piece move in reverse to get the feel of this phase of the swing. Let's watch the flip and reverse a few times to help us review this movement. The forehand swing arm shoulder starts by pulling the arm. The forehand swing arm elbow then pulls down to the hip. The forehand swing arm wrist flips the racquetball racket vertically from a pointing forward position to a pointing backward position as it stays parallel to the back side of the power to speed swing guide. The back leg shoe comes up on the toe to allow the leg to rotate which in turn allows the hips and shoulders to rotate more freely. All these actions arrive together as the shoulders and forehand swing arm line up and point perpendicular towards the back side of the power to speed swing guide. Your body is now facing and parallel to the front side of the power to speed swing guide. As you continue pulling with your forehand swing arm shoulder, your forehand swing arm extends forward and turns the corner to deliver your racquetball racket to a position just behind the racquetball. Notice that the forehand swing arm wrist is positioned just ahead of the racquetball and is still set so that the racquetball racket and your forehand swing arm forearm still form a 90 degree angle. step of the speed phase is to be in the last position of the power phase. In this position, your racquetball racket is parallel to the front side of the power to speed swing guide. The speed phase of the power to speed conversion racquetball swing starts at the lowest part of the swing and ends up high over your head in a flash. You will mostly think of the speed phase as going from low to high in a flash when you swing. However, there are three positions you will want to accomplish. The three main speed positions are close, swing, finish. The speed positions are easy to create since they are based on the power to speed swing guide. Let's look at the details of how to accurately create these positions. Since the power stage has given your body momentum, you are all ready to turn on the speed in a new direction. In the forehand power to speed conversion swing, the racquetball is positioned in the corner of the turn and just behind the front shoe from the side view. The racquetball is also at a height below your front knee. While your racquetball swing arm is pointing at the racquetball, your racquetball racket is still pointing perpendicular to the back side of the power to speed swing guide. Your wrist can produce the fastest speed of any other body component and is about to close 90 degrees through the corner area where the racquetball is. When your racquetball racket meets the racquetball in the corner, it is closed about 45 degrees. Since the power to speed swing guide is offset by 45 degrees to the racquetball court front wall, the racquetball racket will average a straight shot to the racquetball court front wall. Since the power to speed swing is based on a 90 degree change of direction, your racquetball racket will continue closing another 45 degrees after contacting the racquetball. The design of the power to speed swing guide places the racquetball strategically where it will take advantage of the high speed that is produced by your 90 degree racquetball racket wrist closure area. If you look at the 45 degree angle swing view, it is easy to see that your swing arm shoulder is reaching forward and your racquetball swing arm and racket or in a straight line for the first time in your swing. This is a position you should try to feel 
and is like a door slamming shut. In order not to slow down this process, you swing fast to the top of the swing along the front side of the power to speed swing guide. At this midpoint, you can see that the racquetball swing arm is parallel to the front side of the power to speed swing guide. You then finish your forehand swing with your racquetball racket high above your head and pointing perpendicular to the back side of the power to speed swing indicator. If your rear shoe is on the toe, your shoulders have the best chance of rotating so that they point towards the front side of the power to speed swing guide. Your free arm points high into the side and has helped your shoulders turn with an elbow pulling motion throughout the swing. This is Racquetball Power to Speed Conversion.